This week, the NBA released a tentative COVID-19 health protocol as the new season prepares to get underway. Ultimately, there's a vaccine mandate for fans, staff and coaches, but not for players. Well, Daryl Armstrong is the assistant coach of the Dallas Mavericks and a former NBA player. Welcome to BNC. Good to have you here. Everybody is so excited about basketball in the season. Uh, the NBA has won praise for their social justice activism. Yet now it's getting kind of hectic with these basketball players uh, and talking about their vaccine advocacy in a very different way. Uh, tell me, do, do Black Lives Matter when it comes to COVID protections? Well, Black, black Lives Matter no matter where. Uh, you know, to each his own. You know, uh, a lot of these players is choosing not to, to get the vaccine. But uh, for me, I, I, as a coach, I um, I was told I told by my trainer that they're gonna probably start being a little bit uh, demanding on people, staff, you know, people who work the score tables and things like that to get vaccinated. And I, I told him I'm gonna I just try to walk that line as much as I can until I have to do it. And uh, I did it, and it wasn't nothing wrong with it. I did the Pfizer and uh, did the two shots, and, and I was feeling fine, and, and I was good, and uh, you know, uh, it goes crazy. Um, after I got fully vaccinated four days later, I was like, I don't know why I was outside touching or making any contact with anybody, but um, gave this guy a policeman some golf balls. The next thing you know, that next day I got COVID. But uh, I was close to him, I touched him, gave him a hug and everything. And, and But for me, it, it didn't really affect me. I only was in uh, quarantine for eight days. Uh, I lost my taste, I lost my smell, but I got everything back in seven days and I didn't have no fever. And my my time in quarantine was, was not bad, uh, but I know everybody has uh, different situations and things like that. So uh, for me, I would tell people to get the vaccination. Well, Daryl, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're healthy and I'm sorry that you went through that situation. And I can hear in your voice, you know, it's difficult talking about this. It's a difficult topic. And uh, let's face it, you know, the, the players are in a different position because they're so high profile and so many people listen to them you know every word they hang on they, they really take what they're saying seriously so when they come out and they seem hesitant does that not uh you know affect uh their whole the, the whole nba because now they're advocate advocating you know, in a health crisis and, and not intentionally, of course, but let's face it, everybody listens to them. So where's the line? Well, I'm my own person. Um, I was a leader in this, in, in the NBA. I played 14 years. Um, I have my own beliefs and uh, every every person has their own beliefs. If that's what they, that's what they want to do, if they don't want to take the shot, uh, that's on them and they have to deal with the, the consequences and the situations of maybe not going into other cities and being able to play. Uh, I don't know how much that will affect their finances. Uh, that's up to them in the NBA. But, uh, you know, for us, I thought the biggest thing for us was when we went to the bubble two years ago. And the bubble was, to me, was the safest place to be on earth. Uh, we knew everybody got tested every day. We didn't have any players tested positive. Uh, we had a chance to play basketball, enjoy each other, and be around each other. And um, it, it, it scared me once we got put out of the playoffs. I was nervous to come back to Dallas because I didn't know what was going on here in, in Dallas, Texas with the uh, COVID. But I did know what was going on in the bubble, which I knew I was safe and sound. And uh, for me, I, I know the NBA is trying to do all the right things for the players, coaches, fans. Uh, for everybody who's going to be participating and be a part in uh, this upcoming season. So uh, there's nothing wrong with taking cautions, you know, uh, and making sure that everything works out but, right. But Daryl. in the bubble and it worked, it worked out right. Like, like you said, they, they had specific protocols for the bubble. But do you think the NBA should say, yes, they, they have to take the vaccine? And do you think, and do you agree with them being docked their pay for not getting the vaccine? Well, I mean, this, this is our livelihood. Uh, this is what we, we, we do, we chose to do. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's not about one person, it's about all of us. And 
And that's what the NBA has got to think about, everybody. Uh, because, you know, for, for us last year when we started out, uh, early in the season, we had three to five guys get COVID. And, uh, you know, that can also take toll on your team as well. But you don't want to see anyone from your team get, get, to, get put in that situation where they got to stay in the hotel for 16 days in Denver, Colorado. So uh, I think it's, 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 it's right for what the NBA is doing. I mean, I don't, I'm not saying to put pressure on them, but, you know, we're trying to make sure that we get through another season safe and sound and that we have a successful season where no one – going to get it but we for sure we know someone's going to get it but uh, let's try to keep the count down where we can continue to keep this season going forward and not not be stopped by you know many many COVID victims. Well I like I said I can hear it in your voice you're trying to be so careful about this but it sounds like you really want everybody to be safe and you've had the vaccine so obviously you're well, taking I mean, your own precautions but yeah yeah, that's the biggest thing. I think, um, you know, like I say, everybody is, is an individual. Everybody has an opinion. Um, and, and, you know, we got to listen to everybody's opinion. But at the end of the day, uh, the NBA has to run their, their franchise. They have to run their company. And um, this is their company. And, and for us, we work for, I work for the Dallas Mavericks. If I can't be in work every day because of I'm sick or because of uh, a situation, I can't help our team. I can't help myself, so I just, I, I just, for me, I, I, I'm, I was, you know, where I had to make a decision. Yeah, I, I was, I didn't have no religion reason of why I didn't want to take it. I just said I was walk the line so I don't do it. And then the other, at the end of the day, it made my mom proud. When I came home in the summertime, she sprayed me outside with Lysol. She made sure I didn't come <laughs> in the house because she told her. You know, she's older, seventy years old, and, and she sprayed me. And I, I'm like, are you serious, mom? She was like, yeah. Stand out here. I don't know what's going on. You just got off a plane. And so, but when I told her I was vaccinated and fully vaccinated, she was happy and, and proud. And then we got my, my middle brother vaccinated, and, and that just made the, the whole thing great for her. You see that? Listen to mama. Listen to mama, coach. Listen to mama. <laughs> Thank you. That's right. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> now stay safe. Yeah. Coach Daryl Armstrong from the Dallas Mavericks, thank you so much.